in the house of the Lord? I don't believe you. Anybody excited to be in God's house this morning? My God. Okay, do me a favor. Look at somebody and tell them he's worthy of my praise. Look at somebody on the other side and tell them he's worthy of my praise. So I'm going to give it to him. Now, I don't know. Y- y'all didn't have your Starbucks, so what happened? I know we in, we in um, Occupy, so some of y'all, you stop bringing your Starbucks here. You're drinking in your car before you come to church. But uh, if, would you find somebody else? Find somebody behind you and tell them he's worthy of the praise. So you might as well praise him. Any lovers of Jesus in the building? Listen, real quick before we jump into this word. All week long, I have been in great anticipation for what the Lord is going to do for us. And I want to give you a prophetic word that the Lord has been speaking. I've been trying to release this online, but I haven't been able to do it all week. But the Lord began to speak to me about the month of October. And what he said to me about October is that October was going to be a month of supernatural provision. Now, some of you, you know, your faith is low, so you can't receive that. But, but some of us in the building have experienced God's provision before. And we know that if he did it before, he can do it again. And he can break through in our lives. Now, 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 the Lord took me, took me, I, I heard this scripture this week and it rocked me. Uh, I, I was in an experience uh, this week and they began to tell the story about how there was a financial need. They needed to pay their taxes. And when they needed to pay their taxes, they didn't have any money. They got concerned about how they were going to pay what they needed to pay. And Jesus said, let's just go fishing for a minute. And, and as they went fishing, there was a coin in the fish's mouth. Now, some of you are like, Apostle, what does that have to do with anything? It's, the prophetic word is that God is going to release provision in places you would never expect to get it. That, that you'll, you'll think it'll come from one direction, but it's going to come from another direction because God is going to put it in unexpected places. I want to prophesy to somebody this morning that God is making it very clear. Whatever his plan is, he has enough. He has enough to be able to make sure that your, what his plan is, it is manifested and it comes to pass just like he said. Now, now listen, you cannot expect that God is going to release his plan in a dwarfed way. You can't expect that God is going to release his plan in a less than way. You got to expect that God is going to release his plan fully, just like he said he would. Now, I'm going to preach because I certainly have a word from the Lord. But I want to tell you this. This next praise we're going to release is going to be a praise of anticipation and expectation that God is not a man that he should lie, neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Whatever God said, he's going to make good on it. And so this morning, we're going to praise God in expectation that this month we're going to listen. Listen, if you think it's money alone, you're going to miss it. But God is going to give supernatural provision in favor. He's going to give supernatural provision in opening of doors. He's going to give supernatural provision where you where your human resources that you need for the things that God is destined you to do. He is not playing concerning your purpose. He is not playing concerning the plan of God for your life. And you've got to stand and believe that he's going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. So this next praise, look at your neighbor, say this next praise. Look at somebody on the other side and tell them this next praise is going to be a praise of anticipation. Now, 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 now you can't play with this. I'm just trying to prepare you because I want everybody to join with me and I don't want you to be left behind. You can't play with this today, but we're going to give God the best worship and the best praise that we have. Are you ready to praise God in anticipation? I said, are you ready to praise God in anticipation? Come, open your mouth and give him glory. Hey, 
thanks him for the provision. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God that provides. Amen. Be seated. Seriously, sit down. Mark chapter 4. you how to do. Here's the strategy. The strategy is wherever you see lack, you got to praise in the face of lack. So what you're telling lack is that I'm going to praise God in spite of what I see with my natural eyes, but I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. Why is this important? Because lack talks loud. I said lack talks loud. And when, and when you have less than what you need, lack will begin to tell you it's going to always be this way. This is, you're never going to get what you need. You'll never get breakthrough. But you got to make sure that your praise, watch this, drowns out the noise of what lack, of what lack is trying to tell you. And listen to me. It would be irresponsible for me as God's prophet to your life to hype you. I'm not trying to, I promise. I want you to be sober. I told you that last week. But I want you to understand that God cannot lie. The biggest thing that the devil wants you to believe is that God is a liar. That's what he did in Genesis chapter 1. He came to Adam. He said, did God say... His first step was to get you to doubt the voice of God. His first step was to try to convince you that God is a liar. But as God's prophet to your life today, I want to remind you that God cannot lie. He cannot lie. You can take your, you can take your seats. Maybe that's just for me, but I, I, I'm telling you, God's been talking to me, <laughs> and he's. Like, I heard the Lord say it. He said it through my wife yesterday. I was sitting at a table at dinner, and the, and, and I'm telling you, anxiety came over me about something, and I was tripping out. And I was like, I don't know if it's gonna happen. I don't know if it's gonna happen. My wife looked me in my eyes, uh, and she said, Your anxiety is canceling out your faith. She said, the whole time you've been sitting here, you've been talking about the chances of what you believe in God to do not happening. And not once have I heard you open up your mouth and say, it is going to happen. Oh, my God. I want to tell somebody, you've been using that mouth to release anxiety. But I wish somebody would say, it is going to happen. It is going to happen. It is going to happen. I'm trying to let this go. This is the house of big dreams. And the stuff that God has called for each and every one of us to do, we can't do this by ourselves. It requires heaven to open. It requires supernatural provision. 
We don't have enough in our pocket. We don't have enough in our bank accounts. We don't have enough in the people around us. But he made it that way because he wants you to be dependent upon him above all other things. I'm going to tell you one more time, and i got to preach this word. Y'all not going to do what you did at 1230 last week. I'm preaching. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you this chance one more time to praise God and advance. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the tone for the rest of the day. This praise we're about to release is going to flow in the 1230. It's going to flow in the 7 o'clock, and God is about to blow our mind. Let me tell you one more time. God cannot lie. Okay, sit down. Mark chapter 4, verse 30. Seriously, sit down. Mark chapter 4, verse 30. Do not. Mark chapter 4, verse 30. Mark 4, verse 30. You got your Bibles turned there. The Bible says, Then he said, To what shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what parable shall we picture it? It is like a mustard seed, which when it is sown on the ground is smaller than all the seeds on the earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all herbs and shoots out large branches. God help me today. So that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. I want to minister a message this morning entitled, Make It Matter. Make It Matter. Thank you, gentlemen. We are starting a brand new series um, called Endless, and Endless is focused on the potential that you carry. For each and every one of us, we carry potential. And for the next four weeks, we're going to journey through realizing the potential we carry and how it is to be manifested in our lives. Let me tell you something. Seed is important. And we see this example in this parable, in this story that Jesus is sharing here in Mark chapter 4, giving us the understanding and the power of a seed as it relates to kingdom realities. What are you talking about, Sherman? I'm talking about how the kingdom of God works. How the kingdom of God works. He's trying to get you to understand that the kingdom of God, is, it, it works in a way that it packs a whole lot of stuff. I'm getting ahead of myself in small packages. The way the kingdom of God works is that it will, impact, it, it will, it will compact it into one space and allow it the opportunity to expand and become what it's supposed to become. When God looks upon this seed, he doesn't only see what is there, but he sees the potential of what can be. Why is this important? Because when God looks at you, he's not just looking at what is there, but he's talking to the potential of what it can be. That's why some of you get confused by prophetic words you receive. Because God will talk to you. And when he talks to you, he's talking to you based upon the potential you have, not necessarily by where you are right now. And so sometimes you could be as a crazo as crazy. You could be just thinking crazy, doing crazy, and God will send a word to you and say, you're a world changer, and you're going to change the world. And people looking like, this fool is crazy. And why are they getting a word about being a world changer? Because God doesn't speak to you now as much as he speaks to the potential of what he placed inside of you. Jesus was interested in small seeds. Now, here's the thing with us in America. We don't like small things. 
We don't like small stuff. We, we like big packages. We like, we like big stuff. Here in America, we're, we're hungry for big stuff. Our TVs are big. Talk to me, church. Uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, depending upon what areas you live in, houses are even getting bigger, larger and larger. There, there are spaces around us that are huge. Our eating habits are large. Yeah, yeah. Everything around us is large, and we've been focused oftentimes on the largeness of things or how massive things are. But we have not paid attention to what God is concerned about and what Jesus is talking about here. He's talking about the potential that's locked in the small thing. When you are focusing so much on trying to get to the big thing and not figuring out what is locked in the small thing. Reaching for the big thing before you allow the small thing to develop is out of sync and out of timing with God. That's why the Bible says, don't despise the day, watch this, of small. Small beginnings. There are things great that start small. This is why the demon of comparison cannot live inside of you. Because not everything large right now got large God's way, whatever it is. Because we've heard that infections cause swelling. So everything large is not mean, it's, it, it's, and I'm not preaching against largeness. I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm for everything big. I'm, I'm with it. But I need you to understand that everything didn't get large God's way. So you got to be careful because you'll begin to compare and you'll look over at something large and want something, but it's nothing but a big STD. It's like a chlamydia blessing. It's swelling up. It's large, but it didn't get there naturally. Swelling. You, I just got to paint pictures for you. Are you with me today? The potential that God has placed inside of you. Point at your neighbor and say you. That the potential that he's placed inside of you, it is a seed. It is a seed. I love it because in Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 through 12, you can read it later. It's that everything that God created, he put a seed inside of it. It has seed potential inside of it. And you oftentimes will not realize how massive the potential is when it's in its beginning stage. When you first see the seed, it does not impress you. When you first see this, nobody looks at a seed like, that is one sexy seed. I mean, ooh, seed. Right? Nobody looks at a seed and be like, oh, what in the, I mean, cool, cool. Why? We often overlook the potential in the seed. Now, I need you to understand something. If you look at me right now, you'll get a little confused. And I've accomplished a lot. I've done a lot in my life. But even right now, I am yet in seed form. And if you look at me right now, you'll get confused about where God is taking me. Because I am just starting. And I'm not about to be moved by the smallness of what I am right now. Because I know that there is something massive locked inside of this small thing that God has planted something big is on the way but you have to understand something big is already present <laughs> uh, it's, it's in the potential but what is potential I'm happy you asked class potential is an untapped dormant quality or ability you have in you it's an untapped, dormant quality or ability you have in you. But when it's developed, when it's developed, it can lead you into the major successes that you've already had inside of your heart. And it can grow into a tree of massive proportions. But it starts with the seed. 
Here's the thing about potential. Everybody has it. Let's walk. And because everybody has it, you have to realize that does not make you special. I don't understand how people end up um, becoming friends, uh, dating, hanging out. And the reason why they're in relationship with people is because of their potential. Well, that's nothing special. Everybody, but we say it like it's unique. Like, they have potential. And so does that person over there. And so, so does the graveyard that has lots of potential dead inside of it. Potential, listen to this, write this down. Potential, write it down. Potential doesn't mean crap. Write it down, just like I said it. Don't be religious. P potential doesn't mean crap. C-R-A-P, if you don't know how to spell that, crap. Okay? Doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean anything. Why? Because if we do not do anything with the potential, the potential doesn't matter at all. See, that's what you've been living off of for over a decade. I've got potential. So what? I want to connect with people who will not just have a potential. I don't just want to connect with you because you were seed. I want to connect with you because you become the tree. And as the scripture said earlier, the tree now has branches so big, it has enough shade for all of us. And so there ought to be proof of your potential. And you don't get to just say, I have the ability to do X, Y, and Z. I'm called to do this and the other. If there's no proof of your potential, I'm not going to hang out with everybody who's just a seed but doesn't even have a process yet, haven't even started growing roots yet, haven't even started growing up yet, haven't even started extending yet. Your potential does not matter until you do something with it. I'm not going to preach to make you feel good for the next four weeks. Just talk about potential, and you can leave out of here talking about, oh, my God, I got it. You got it, I got it, I got it. We got it. So what? So she said it. I can give it to you, but what you going to do? I can give it to you, but. It's simple. Well, what, 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 what? Thank you, whoever. Appreciate you, boo. So it is important. That you realize God, he's giving you the untapped, dormant abilities, but we've got to do something. The seed has to, first of all, understand this, the God factor. Somebody say the God factor. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, God is talking to Abram. And this is what he says. I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee. And I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. What is he talking to? The potential inside of him. He's talking about the potential inside of him, what he could become, what the God idea is for his life. God sowed the seed of greatness which needed to be nurtured inside of Abraham. So the seed of potential has to be nurtured. It has to be cultivated. It has to grow. So God has planted a seed of greatness in you as a child of God, but are you willing to cultivate, or do you just like talking about your seed? Some of our whole life story is about the seed. Just the fact that it is there. So you have the potential to build a million dollar company, but you refuse to take the steps. So who cares about your potential? You have the potential to have a healthy family and to break the generational curses that were passed down from your family before. But if you don't do anything to nurture that potential inside your house, to begin to create a healthy environment, that causes for that thing to be sustained and for that thing to grow and develop, it doesn't matter that you have the potential to have a healthy family. So there must be a shift. Somebody say a shift. 
Genesis chapter 3 and 1, write all these scriptures down, tells us that everything God has made, he made very good. And inside of every seed is greatness which needs to be unlocked. Unless you nurture, activate, cultivate, or do something with the seed within you, it remains a seed forever. I want you to think about how many trees died as a seed. I'm talking about people. I want you to think about how many people you knew that had the potential to be a tree but died as a seed. Never developed, never grew, never expanded, just a seed. There are many people walking in lack, not knowing the great seed within them has already been planted by God. God multiplies the seed that is sown. Let's deal with some things today. Here's the first question I want you to ask yourself. What do I see? Write that down. What do I see? When you see yourself, this is what matters most right now. What do you see? How about this? God can see stuff in you, and it doesn't matter what he sees. I know some of you guys are, what? Yeah, it doesn't matter what he sees, because if you don't see it, it's not going to manifest. <laughs> so so you can, God can say, oh, this is what I see. You are X, Y, and Z. But if you don't see it, you'll never just do the things that need to be done for it to become what it needs to become. The Bible says time and chance are given to all. So everybody has the same levels of opportunity, but the difference between all of us is what we do with what we've been given. What do you see? 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 through 2, tells us a story about a widow who said she had nothing. She had nothing. She overlooked the potential. Prophet shows up, says, this is what we got to do. There's a plan. We got to initiate this plan. We got to execute this plan. And she says, I, I have nothing. She, she downgraded what she had in her hand. How long have you been looking at what you have inside of you and have been downplaying it? Let's be sober today. I'll make you holler at the end. But right now, let's be sober. Are you looking at yourself? What do you see? I can look at anybody in this room and tell you, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. Even if I'm lying to you, you're beautiful. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're beautiful. But it doesn't matter what I say to you. If when you look yourself in the mirror, you say, this isn't beauty. I could spend a whole hour trying to convince you of it. But until you believe it, it means nothing. So here's the question again. What do you see? What do you see? When you look at yourself, what do you see in there? What do you think that God plans to do with you? What do you think he wants to do with your life? Do you think he wants you to just be another human being? Do you think you're just another mother, just another father, sister, brother, cousin? Or do you realize the awesome potential that's locked inside of you? And if you understand the potential, what are you doing with it? The Lord gave uh, Adam something interesting in Genesis chapter 2. When he began to talk to Adam about who he was and his abilities and his potential, first thing that God did for Adam was not give him a wife. He gave him work. <laughs> he didn't give him a hot pair of thighs to sleep next to. That wasn't God's first goal. That wasn't his intention. His goal was, let me set up an environment 
for you to develop your potential. Work develops potential. Work develops potential. I'm going to put you in an environment. Let me say it differently. The right work develops potential. Let me say that differently. The right work develops potential. And so he says, let me, let me put you in an environment to cause for what I see in you grow. I remember when I was growing up, one of the things that my mother did well was that she found out what was in me. And because she saw the potential in me, Pastor Vera, she put me in environments that had the ability to cultivate me and cause for me to do the right work to become who I was called to be. So my mother always saw that I would do this. And unfortunately, hesitantly, she dropped me inside of the world of the church hesitantly because she didn't want me to see the evil that was back there too. That's a whole nother message for another day. But because she dropped me in the right environment, I am who I am today because of the right work that was done to cultivate what was on the inside of me. Hold on. So for every parent in the room, it is not your job to just call them Ray Ray, Boo Boo, Baby, Mama, all the words that you, nicknames you got for them. You got to begin to find out what potential is locked inside of your child and pull on the anointing of Mary. You preaching, Sherman. Pull on the anointing of Mary and make sure that your child gets to their cross. It is the job of every parent to pull on the anointing of Mary and Joseph. And if the cross is the goal, I'm going to do everything I can do in my hand to make sure you get to your cross. Potential. I've got, to, I've got to make sure of it in the relationships around me. I'm not going to hang out with you if you don't want to cultivate your potential. Because if you don't want to cultivate your potential, you don't understand my language then. Because I'm working to do the right work so I can become the tree and not die as a seed. And while I'm working, you're looking at me strange because you want to play patty cake. And you want to go to the movies. I ain't got time to sit at the movies with your broke behind. I got to go somewhere and do the right work to grow my potential. Potential. She said, Adam, Adam, first thing I'm going to do with your potential is I'm going to give you an assignment. Give you the right work to grow your potential. Are you getting this today? So he demands, puts a demand on the potential inside of Adam's mind by commanding him to name the animals. By commanding him. What was he doing? He was stimulating his potential. He gave him the right kind of work. He said, here's your assignment. Name the animals. Why? Why? He said, because I know the creative abilities, and I know what you have inside of you. So I'm just going to start you here. Name the animals. Because then you'll begin to understand that everything that comes out of your mouth can move mountains, uh, can cause for things to happen, can cause for things to manifest. But I'm going to start you off with the right word. Name the animals. And if you begin to name the animals, then when it comes to the larger things, uh, you'll be able to handle it. If you just begin to work in your seed form and begin to do the right word, then I'll have you ready at the right moment for the bigger things. Some of you are trying to get large too soon. Remain a seed and work in that area till you're cultivated to the place. Potential. So the Lord gave Adam insight into his potential. The potential of his spirit by commanding him to dominate the whole world. See, the whole goal was world domination. He said, uh, the potential you have is to dominate the world. But I'm going to start you, name those animals. Y'all get this. Your potential dominate the world. I'm going to start you, name the animals. Look at your neighbor and say, name the animals, homie. Name the animals. So what does that mean? It means this. God wants you to maximize your potential. But in order for your potential to be maximized, there is a process. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I'm going to have a whole other thing for you in this series. But let me tell you this. There's a process before the potential 
can happen. What are you talking about, Apostle? Let's go to John chapter 12, verse 24. Is this helping anybody this morning? John chapter 12, verse 24. Let's look at this. Put it up for me, guys. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and does what? No, don't say it like that. It does what? Dies. Leave it up there. It dies. It dies. If unless it dies, it remains alone. Let's deal with that for a moment. So you, as a seed, if you're not willing to die to yourself, if, not, if you're not willing to go through the process of becoming the tree that's talked about in Mark, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't, if you're not willing to go through the process, which includes dying, you will not become what God has called for you to become. If you're not willing to say, God, your will is better than mine, your ideas are better than mine, your ways are better than mine, I want to submit to your plan and your will, I'll die to myself, which, by the way, is the way of the Christian. I know they didn't tell you that when they did altar call, but I'm going to tell you this real quick. The way of the Christian is death. Uh-oh. I say this death. You got to die to your ambition. You got to die to what you thought it should be. You got to die to what you wanted, and it's not me, but it's Christ alive in me. That's the Go. I do not want just what I want. I want what he wants. And in order to get sometimes what he wants, what I want sometimes has to die. Lest the grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. It remains alone. It's not going to accomplish what it's supposed to accomplish. But if it dies, it produces... What does it produce? Much grain. Right? So some of our prosperity, which I'm not talking money alone, because real prosperity means health within your mind, body, and soul, including your money. Are you getting this? So the Bible says we should prosper even as ours. That's the way we prosper in God. So if you've got money and you got all of that, but your soul is a mess, that you're not prosperous anyway, because you're about to die. You're about to do something real dumb and die, naturally or spiritually. And you go, all the riches won't matter when you're on your deathbed. Y'all quiet in here. You, you got to make sure that you understand that God has placed something inside of you, but in order for it to live, you have to die. In order for your potential to live, you must die. The process refers to the things you need to do. The actions that you need to take. The process in God is not passive. It is active. Okay? You, you cannot expect God to process you just by himself. If you don't acquiesce to his, to his processing by dying and actively getting involved in the process, then it is not going to happen for you. So we are just laying there in prayer saying, process me, God. And God said, okay, I want you tomorrow, I want you to go to this place. You're like, yeah, yeah, God, process me, God. Okay, tomorrow call that person that hurt you last year. Go on and be honest about the fact that they hurt you. And deal with that pain you've been carrying for 12 months. Oh, God, I'll get to that, God. Process me, God. God is giving you opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to be processed. But oftentimes we think the stuff he's talking to us is outside of the processing. When Holy Spirit whispers to you, change your attitude. Don't look at them like that. When they talk to you, that, when, they, when they talk to you, don't squint your face up like that. I've told you before, there's a bunch of you in here who are not successful because of that face. You don't have to like it. You are not successful 
because of the face. Keep your, keep your focus. Because of the face that you make when people are communicating with you. Your body language. And that's why you are still without everything that you need. Because you haven't learned the first basis of some natural communication skills. That's why I know you don't got the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost himself will correct you in that ugly looking face. And you can't master stuff that they taught me in community college at Santa Monica College. As a freshman in my speech class. And you got the Holy Ghost who blows on the stuff you have inside of you and you refuse to correct your character. Sherman, you're preaching in here. Thank you, Sherman, because they ain't saying nothing. God wants you to become the greatest thing that you can become, but as a seed, you must be willing to go through the process. And whatever he says, you better learn how to say yes. You better, uh -oh, you better learn how to say yes. It needs to be yes, sir. Let me tell you how y'all do. I'm a preaching here. Let me, get Let me tell you. This is how we do. I teach my kids this. Myra, this is what I teach my kids. The kids come to me, and, and they'll be like, I still give them some directions, and they would be like, yeah, okay. Excuse me? And, and they're like, what? I say, it's yes, sir. It's yes, sir. Uh, so I've been doing this since two years old. It's yes, sir, right? With all of us. It's two years so to the point, in my house culture, everybody's sir that are, that are males, right? And everybody's male. So my kids call each other sir. And so the other day I asked them, why are you calling them sir? They was like, just in case I end up talking to you, I want to make sure, y'all, this is what they told me last week. I want to make sure it's in my mind because I don't want to mess up and just say yes. So I call Bubby, yes, yeah, sir. I call Makai, sir. We call each other, sir, because I want to have it right when the time comes for the person I'm supposed to talk to. Y'all are not getting this. You've got to be willing to go through the process and be trained for the moment that God might have need of you. And if you can't deal with your brothers and sisters, right, when the door opens and the table is spread, you'll show up the wrong way because you are a seed that is on process I'll give the rest later come on Mark chapter 4 verse 30 we're going to finish where we started. We're going to end where we started. Mark chapter 4, verse 30. And he said, so what then shall we like in the kingdom of God? Or with what parable shall we picture it? It is like a mustard seed. It's like a mustard seed which when it is is sown on the ground. So it is a seed, but the seed doesn't matter till it's sown. Seed doesn't matter till it's in the right environment. Seed doesn't matter until it's sown. When it's sown to the ground, it's smaller than all the seeds on the earth. The mustard seed, particularly, is smaller than all of the seeds on the earth. Right now, you feel mighty small. Some of us in the room, we don't feel the capacity that we have. We don't feel the potential of what's locked inside of us. We feel small, but God is like, that's the way that I made you. I made you as a seed. But when that seed is sown, when you get processed and you get into the right place, what begins to happen is that you're about to grow up. I just want to prophesy to somebody this morning. You're about to grow up. You're about to grow up. Well, the place that you are right now is not your landing place. I feel like I'm about to run. The place you are right now is not your landing place. As long as you go through the process, there is a growth and it's coming up. 
Your growth is coming up. You're about to break through the ground that you have been in. You're about to break through and you're about to grow up. You've been a seed and you've been underground all of this time. But if you just hold the moment, you're about to grow up. And as you grow up, listen to this. You're going to become greater than all the herbs that shoots out large branches. And God's saying, what I'm about to do through you is going to offer shade and it's going to offer a home for other things around you. Your potential is so massive that when it is developed and when it is taken care of, it does not only affect you, but it begins to spread wide around you. And it affects everything that comes into your vicinity. Let me tell you today, it doesn't matter if you don't do anything with it. The title of this message today is Make It Matter. Make your potential matter. Make your potential matter. Do something with your potential. Cultivate your potential. Cause for yourself to be expanded. Call for yourself to grow. Be willing to go through the process. Otherwise, you are just another seed. Lift your hands. Father, we receive your word. Come on, open your mouth real quick and receive it with your worship. With your worship. Come on, all nations, with your worship. With your worship. With your worship. Yes. Yes. Come on. Come on. That's it. Come on. I preached until that anointing came in the room. The anointing that's calling your potential forward. The anointing that's calling your potential forward. There's an anointing that's calling your potential forward. You do not have to remain there. He's calling you up, 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 up. He's calling you up, 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 up. He's calling you up, 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 up. He's calling you up, 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 up. Come on, worship him. Worship into that. I said worship into that. I'm not staying a seed. I'm going to become a tree. I'm not just staying a seed. I'm going to become a tree. My branches are extending. My fruit, I'm going to bear it. I will not remain a seed. I'm going to make this potential work. I'm going to make this potential matter. I'm going to make this potential matter. I shall become what he's designed me. Come on, worship.